Chloe Hanslip, here we are in the Cadogan Hall, which as concert halls go is probably one that you know quite well. I have played here many a time, it's true. Um, I always love coming back to the Cadogan Hall. Uh, it's such a wonderful venue in which to play. Um, the audience is always incredibly responsive and incredibly attentive, um, and it's, it's a joy to play in. I dread to think how long you have been working in this industry, but uh, am I right in thinking that you started performing uh, or at least playing the violin when you were two years old? That's correct, yes. I started with the Suzuki method actually when I was two um, and I just, I loved it. I didn't really want to do anything else um, and I, I also started at that time, uh, at the same time, the associated board um, exams because my teacher also did associated board along with Suzuki and uh, I did sort of one, two and three um, and by the time I was sort of I don't know, about four or five, I'd already done those, and then I, then I changed teacher, actually. Um, but no, I did start when I was two, um, and it's, I've never looked back. Now, presumably, it was your parents that decided, OK, here is somebody with aptitude. They, they can hold a tune, I suppose, with an instrument. Was that how it worked? Um, what happened was I'm the youngest of four, um, and the next one in the family, uh, she was studying at the, uh, at the academy. Um, she's a pianist, and as soon as I could walk, I would go up to the piano and pick out the notes of the pieces that she was practising. Um, and it was, it was the, the, the tune of what she was playing. Um, and my parents just didn't want another pianist in the house, so they thought, oh, we'll try the violin, um, and took me to, to the Suzuki lessons, and um, I just loved it. My mother started with me, because that's the way the Suzuki method works, is that the child learns from, from the parent how to talk, um, and so therefore can, the, the, the parent can help the child learn how to play the violin. Um, my mother was told after about three weeks that she could give up because I was already better than her. So. But your parents were both musicians? or um, No, not at all. Um, neither parent's musician. Um, my, my grandmother on my mother's side was, uh, was a wonderful pianist um, and composer as well. Um, my mother had a ballet school and so she used to write all the, the ballet music, incidental music to go with the ballets that my mother would put on. So there was always music around, I guess? Absolutely. Always, always music on the, on the radio, always classical music on the radio, and um, I was immersed in it, but um, I'm very grateful for that. Does that mean you uh, prefer ballet music? Is that always in the back of your mind? Um, not particularly, I wouldn't say. I, mean, I love to go to the ballet, um, but um, I, with the violin, of course, when you play, there are some concerti, especially some pieces, um, where you know there is a very strong dance theme, um, so I suppose maybe that comes into play then, but um, I, I, just, I just love music, really. Other pieces of music then that uh, you've, you've always known all the way through your life, so they, they are, are ones that you prefer to perform or are you always looking for new repertoire? I'm always looking for new repertoire. There's always, um, there's so much repertoire out there actually for, for the violin, both known and unknown. Um, and I love to do both the known and unknown. I mean, one of my very first CDs, actually, well, the second CD, was the Brook Violin Concerto, the first violin concerto paired with the third violin concerto, which is very rarely played, um, which I think is a real shame, because I think it's a fantastic work. Um, so there are pieces that I, that I do love to play, but I could never, I could never say what my absolute favorite is at any one time, because, the, yeah, they're all just so great. How does it work? If you know, for example, that there are pieces of music which are ignored or neglected, are you able then to sort of push them forward? Do you, do you learn them just in case? Um, I do to a degree. Um, for example, I've, you know, I've recently recorded the York Bowen, um, the, the complete works for violin and piano, which really are never played at all. And um, there's some really, some real gems in there actually, such as the first violin sonata and also the, the fantasy. Um, and I always try and program that now in, in recitals. I always try and program one of those pieces within there because I think it's, it's such great music that really deserves to be heard. If you started learning the violin age two and uh, it became very much part of your life from then on, I guess, I guess it was always going to happen that this was going to be your career. I guess so, I guess so. I mean, I certainly can't imagine doing anything else. Um, I'm incredibly privileged. Um, I get to play wonderful music. I get to work with incredible people and musicians. Um, and I get to go to the places. I don't get to see many, much of the places that I go to, but I do get to go to different places as well. So, you know, what's not to love? In fact, we have managed to catch you uh, in between uh, flights to various places. You were in Germany fairly recently. Uh, you, you're always traveling around the world. Uh, but as you say, you never really get any time to, 
to see these places properly. No, it's true. I mean, sadly, I, I don't. I'm going to Florence, um, you know, tomorrow, and I will see. I'm going to be there for about ten days, so I might manage to fit in a morning or, or sort of a couple of hours. But I really, I really won't see very much. I was in New Zealand, um, you know, a couple of months ago, and I was there for four and a half days. And the most I saw really of of anything of New Zealand was from the plane, um, which is a real shame. So, but it's you know, I can't complain. I, I have a wonderful life, and I get to do what I love. Which begs the question, when do you practice? All over the place. Um, when do I practice? Well, I practice, um, I study scores. Um, I study scores when I'm on the plane. Um, I'll listen to pieces when I'm on the plane as well. Um, and I'll go through it in my head. Um, I nearly always have one of the pieces that I'm going to be playing um, in the near future going around my head and sort of working on working out passages in my head. Um, and I practice um, with mutes on. I'm sometimes very fortunate in that hotels let me use conference rooms late into the evening to practice so I don't disturb people around me. So you, 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 I practice when I can, really. And uh, despite jet lag as well, I guess. It's sort of one of those things where sometimes you just have to not allow yourself to, to get jet lag. I mean, when you're going to New Zealand for such a short amount of time and then coming home and then going away again um, within the space of a, a day or two, then really you just sort of... You just have to say to yourself, well, you're not allowed to be tired. <laughs> and of course, the elephant in the room is the fact that you have a marvellous violin there. Have you always had this violin? Um, no, I haven't always had this particular one. Um, I've had this now for five to six years. Um, and it's, uh, it's a, a marvellous instrument. I absolutely adore playing it. It's a Guarneri del Gesù uh, from 1737. Um, and uh, it's, it's really wonderful to have an instrument um, now knowing that, you know, that, I, that I can have it for a certain amount of time and for, for a while because uh, whilst I was always very fortunate um, enough to be able to play fantastic instruments, I never knew quite how long I was going to be able to play them for. So um, sometimes I wasn't quite sure whether I'd have an instrument to play a concert on, which obviously wasn't ideal. Um, but I'm, I'm absolutely indebted to, to the people who made this possible. Um, I set up a trust fund uh, consortium um, because violins are wonderful. Um, well, actually, any musical instrument um, that's well looked after it appreciates. Um, and unless something happens to it, it shouldn't depreciate. Um, and very expensive. Uh, yes, fairly. <laughs> it varies, it varies. Um, but I'm, I'm incredibly indebted to, to the people who, who made this possible. Um, it's, it's a wonderful instrument. It gives me the opportunity to sing. It gives me the opportunity to project to the back of the hall. It gives me the opportunity with so many different colours and tones um, and, and dynamics as well. Even if I want to play you know, really, really quietly, it's still possible to hear. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just a fabulous instrument. You make it sound as if it's a bit of a partnership between you and the instrument. Is that the way it goes? I suppose in a way it is. Um, you know, I spend quite a lot of time with the violin. I practice, um, you know, it can vary, but it can be anything from four to eight hours a day. And, and when you're doing concerts as well. So I suppose in a way it is a partnership, yes. And we don't say how much this is worth. It's it, enough. <laughs> it's worth enough. Um, no, I'm, it's, it's a wonderful instrument. Do you have to take it in the plane with you if you're travelling? Absolutely. So, and do you ever let it out of your sight? Very rarely. <laughs> no, it's it's always with me. I'm always very, very careful. Um, on the other hand, I try not to be too paranoid about it because um, it's sort of one of those things that I think you, you, you could drive yourself slightly crazy with. Um, but I, I always have it with me, um, and it's always it's always on my back, basically. So, so jet-setting around the world, uh, concerts in the biggest cities with the greatest orchestras of the world... Uh, you're, you're going to go playing for another sort of, uh, well, 40, 50 years. I mean, what, what can you look forward to if you're already doing this? Um, just to continue really doing what I'm doing. Um, there's the, the beautiful thing about music, I think, is that, you know, you never stop learning. Um, you can always discover something new within, within a piece, um, depending on who you're playing it with, who, it, if you're playing with different orchestras, different conductors, um, that will, will produce new results. And that's, that's always very exciting. And... And just the more, the more you study and the more you read about the composers and the more you sort of really delve into that world, um, there's always more to learn. So there's, there's that um, that I've got to look forward to. Um, and really just to carry on playing and, and doing concerts um, and hopefully doing some more recordings. And um, yes, there's a lot to look forward to.